Hello guys and welcome back to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about non-primitive data types in Java. In the previous lecture we talked about the primitive data types and now we'll discuss about some of the data types which are not primitive. First of all let's understand what is the difference between primitive and non-primitive. So the primitive data types are the ones which are by default supported by Java and non primitives are the one which are a bit custom in nature where you as developer have the liberty to define the nature of that data type. We'll look at some examples of that as well. But when we talk about which all are the non primitive data types, we broadly talk about arrays. We talk about classes. We talk about strings as well, and we will cover some of them in today's lecture and we have the a detailed lecture upcoming about the classes as well in fact in the in the uh, after a few lectures we'll we'll cover how we'll create classes as well but for today's lecture we are going to focus on string data type and array data type and like i said for classes we have a dedicated uh, lecture upcoming so don't worry about that and again for this particular case as well i have already prepared a demo for this and we'll basically do some uh, look at some hands on examples to see how do we create these variables what is what does these variables mean and the first non primitive data type we are going to talk about is string and before i go on further i should also mention that it's very debatable in the java community to call string as a non primitive data type and actually technically speaking string is a special data type it neither fully lies in the primitive category nor it fully lies in the non primitive categories i'm covering this as a, as a non primitive data type because it's a bit inclined towards the non primitive category uh, why do we uh, do this is because java does provide native support for string handling in the jdk and that's the reason some of the developers feel that string is a primitive data type which is primitively supported by java but at the same time string is so customizable and it's so special in nature it's the way it stores the value the way it provides the operations and handlings it's so different than primitive data types that it cannot fully be put in the same bucket as the primitive data types so that's why i said it's it's a special data type a bit inclined towards the non primitive category so what is string basically we covered about the char data type in the previous lecture and in char data type you can only store a single character right but if you want to store a complete name of somebody then it's a list of character it's basically a lot of characters together then in that case you would need a data type to store that continuous sequence of characters and that's what string does string can store a continuous sequence of characters technically string is basically a character array you can call string as a character array and don't worry if you don't understand about the word array i will explain that in the same lecture so basically it stores the continuous sequence of characters that's how that's how we define string and you see this string this is a basically the keyword the data type basically in java so whenever you want to create a string you need to write string with s capital you need to give a name to the string this can be anything and then you can provide the value which is which this particular string is going to contain so you can see this is a continuous sequence of characters t e s t are the four characters which this string is going to contain and after that again i'm printing this particular value and like i said don't worry about this we'll cover this when we'll when we'll write our first program in java so this is just to print the string value i'm just putting a string placeholder here and then i'm actually printing the printing the values of the string variable now string can be created in multiple ways in java this is one way of creating it there is another way of creating a string variable which is this one which says again the string data type some variable name a keyword called new again don't worry about what is this new keyword we'll cover this when we'll talk about our running our first program in java and writing the first program from scratch then we again say string and then we provide the value so if i compare this line number 4 to line number 7 you can see that difference is that i'm still storing the same value test but the difference is that here there is no new string keyword but here we have this new string keyword so what is the difference the difference in this that in this case in this particular case string is going to reuse the same object multiple times 
but in this case every time you call this it is going to create a new object again what is object it's just you can think of it as for now you can think of it as a memory block we'll again cover objects in details but these are two different ways in which you can create string this is generally the most popular way of doing it because this is memory efficient because you can reuse the same variable again and again so i'm creating the string variable here and creating another string variable str1 here and printing both of them then i've created this strange looking thing here which is basically an array array like i said is a, also an a, a non primitive data type in java and array can store a continuous sequence of anything that anything can be a number that anything can be characters that anything can be a, a, a floating number as well so basic idea is that if you want to store a collection or a, or a sequence of multiple multiple uh, uh, values how do you do that you do that with the help of arrays array is a data structure a non primitive data structure in java which can store lot of values of similar type we also call it as homogeneous data structure which because it can only store same data type values or homogeneous data type values so the the biggest way to identify array is this square bracket whenever you see this square bracket in java it means it's an it's an array variable so here i am creating an integer array variable with the name arr this is the name of this particular array it is only going to store integer values because i have specified int and the moment i provide the square brackets it's mean it means that it is an array so you can declare an array like this and then you need to assign a size to the array size is basically denoting how many values this data structure is going to store so i'm saying new again it's a keyword and i'm saying that okay create a, a memory block for storing two integers so this particular array arr can store at max two values two values at continuous locations the next thing about array is that it stores the value in a zero index based location so like i said it can store two values so the first location will always be array of zero and this is how you specify the location or index of the element which is going to be stored so at the zeroth location of this array i'm storing zero the first location of the array i'm storing one and this is just to show an error scenario but i will just comment this for now you can just put double slashes and comment any line so i'm just storing uh, filling up this array for two values and the two values location would be zero index and first index these are just continuous memory locations and we denote those memory locations as 0 and 1 array indexes always start with 0 and i'm just putting some values here you can put any values and then i'm printing the whole array and i'm also printing the first value of the array and we'll see how this pans out and we'll also see how we can change this so now we are going to run this application so i'll just go to run as and click on run as java application and once i hit that i get this output here so let's understand this output the first one is i'm just printing the string which has the value test and you can see it has printed here it is coming from this line then the next line which is printed is line number 8 where i'm saying another string str1 and str1 also had the same value so you can see another string has the same value and then i have printed the array here the complete array and you see this strange value here it also tells us that if you want to print the array then you cannot just put the variable name and print it the reason is because this is a non primitive data type and once you do this it is basically printing the memory footprint of this array the whole memory location where this array is stored that's why you see this strange looking number which is the memory hash code and if you want to print any particular value or any particular element inside this array then you can do that by providing the index location of that element so here i have said that print the zeroth location element of the array the zeroth location array uh, element of the array was 0 so you can see the value 0 here let me put some other value just to just for fun and show you how this works so i've just changed the values and now let's see what do we get for array 0 you can see now i get value 3 because now the at the zeroth location the three value is being stored and that is what what is being printed here we can also print the first value i'll just go run as java application you can see now the array of first index is being stored 
which is basically technically the second element of the array but because array always works on a zero index based value uh, format that's why when we say array one the second element is printed when i say array zero the first element is printed so always remember that array is a zero index based collection or data structure basically what happens if i do this now there is no third element in this array because the array has the size only of two elements and when i say arr of two which means i'm trying to print the third element in this array which does not exist so let's see what happens in that case i get an exception exception is basically an error i get an error saying that index 2 is out of bounds for length 2 it means that the array length was actually 2 and index 2 does not exist remember it's saying index 2 not the element 2 index 2 doesn't exist because only index 0 and index 1 exist this makes two elements and the actual size is also two it does not have capacity to store third element it does not have third element location anywhere that's why it complains that you are trying to print a non-existing value so this is where i would like to conclude my lecture about the non-primitive data types so we covered about string we covered arrays and like i said we'll cover classes in the upcoming lecture as well uh, in the next session we are going to talk about tokens in java and if you enjoyed this video a thumbs up would be massively appreciated and do not forget to subscribe to simply code for more programming related videos thank you and we'll meet again in the next session